Welcome to Think Like a Business Heir, week number two. And uh, this is all out of my book, Think Like a Business Heir, a Christian's guide to starting a bu and building a legacy business. God's plan is to prosper you. Under the world system, there's a, there's a ceiling. But when I start a business, I take the ceiling off of my life and allow for me to be blessed to be a blessing. And so we give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. And, you know, I believe that you read, you do the work in there, but then a video helps nail it all together. Tonight, you're going to enjoy tonight's video or today's video. What do you want? As we talk about this, I, I want to say this quote from Erica Oppenheimer. Without a solid foundation, you will have trouble creating anything of value. You got to have a good foundation. And you might have had a business for 10, 15 years, and I've seen this and met with people, but they don't have a good foundation. You may have to rip some things up, get that foundation so that we can build it up higher and better. And if you're starting a business, let's start out strong. So we're going to talk about things about the name of your company, how important that is, uh, the website and having the right domain name and uh, having uh, social media and your social media presence, but also your SEO and how to get a good SEO. You want to make sure that you're coming up up strong in the Google and, and that entire world and how do I do that and Amazon one of the big things in this world if you are sort of selling uh, different merchandise products and so I know you're gonna enjoy today sit back relax grow with us begin to expand your life expand your thinking and I know that God is gonna richly bless you who's ready to make some money out there anybody out there come on Get loud. Dear Heavenly Father Lord we thank you and praise you for the group that is here tonight and those that are watching that you lead them, you guide them into all truths. Lord, that you instruct them, Lord, and with inside of them they get the wisdom that they need. Lord, they get the courage and the confidence they need to be able to step out in any new endeavor that you put in front of them, Lord. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that your favor is upon every single one of them. Your favor brings them the resources, the ideas, and the people that they need to have the success that you want them to have. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Uh, Erica Oppenheimer said this, without a solid foundation, you will have trouble creating anything of value. Tonight we're going to talk about your foundation for your business. Now, a strong foundation is key. Even Jesus said to build your life on the rock. If I don't have a strong foundation, it doesn't matter how much I put into everything going up. At some point, it's probably going to fall. And many businesses um, over time have crashed. And some have even gotten really big really fast. But because they didn't have a strong foundation, they, 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 they couldn't weather the storms that often come in economies and in the society, you know, the different storms. And so their, their business that grew ended up crashing down really hard. And so to me, it's very important that we build a strong foundation. And you already have a business and you're here tonight. And uh, You'll be able to pull, I believe, from tonight's teachings, from the books, uh, ways in which you can strengthen your already foundation that you have. And remember, the key, I believe, for um, those of you that are watching a part of this is that if you want to get the most out of it, you need to be reading the book, maybe doing the homework that is in there. You need to be listening uh, to this while you're taking notes and then be meditating on it afterwards on the way home before you go to bed. And... You do this and you'll probably retain six to seven times more than just reading it or just watching it alone. And I will be, let me say this, the goal of this is that everybody that is watching or a part of this, by the time we get done with what I believe is probably week four, maybe week five, week four probably, that you will have a business at that time. Well, I, mean, I don't care how big a business. You could be selling rocks outside or, or yeah, you're talking about selling my books. Out. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever your business is, he's going to buy up all my books and then sell them. Have a monopoly on Scotty's books. Uh, what a great business. That but whatever it might be, because you, oftentimes in your mind, and we'll, we'll get more about this tonight, that oftentimes in our mind, we're like, well, if this is not the, you know, this is, uh, the business idea I have is not a big major business right? Doesn't matter. I just want you to start one because the purpose of this first business might be just for you to learn. And I'm not saying that it may not become successful because let me tell you this, if somebody can come out with a company that sells steps so your dog can get up on the bed and make millions of dollars, anyone can make money because I need, if you're going to invent something, invent something that gets the dog off the bed, not on the bed. Amen. <laughs> but there's infinite ways people have made 
tons of money on the dumbest ideas. Uh, in the 80s, a guy had a pet rock, and he just find rocks and put a picture. He made millions of dollars selling pet rocks. So whatever your idea is, it can get really big, but even if it doesn't work out, if there are some businesses that happen, as long as you listen tonight to really the core part of the message, that it doesn't matter if it failed because success is always on the stepping stones of failure. And if we learn and grow and get back up on the horse and start another business, that you'll come into contact with a successful business. So tonight, we're going to talk about foundation and a couple other things. Number one is name. If you don't have a business, and even if you do have a business, kind of listen to what I'm talking about tonight, that the name of your business is a big thing. I think a lot of times in people, people get a name and their idea, well, this is, you know, this me, this name is significant, this means something. But the name is not conducive to a great business. If you think about the great businesses of today, it's a very simple name, right? Remember I say KISS, keep it simple. Keep everything, a simple name, Yahoo, Google. Apple, my gosh, Apple, right? The, the name is simple. It's easy to remember. It's easy to spell. It's easy to say. It's easy, right? And, and when you come up with your name, remember, it's usually going to be in your website. And if you have some, some crazy long or complicated name, it, it, business is already hard. Your name should not make the business harder. Your name should make it easier. I was uh, meeting with somebody, this is a few years ago, uh, maybe five, six years ago in, Missis they're in Mississippi, and they have a business. And I remember she handed me the business card with the name on it, and it was like typed out. It was like that long. It was like, uh, I, I kind of wrote what I, I remember it being. It was Angelica and Reagan's, but Reagan's was R-H-E-A, Nails and Hair Boutique, and dot com. Okay, I'll never type that out. Right? I'll need another haircut by the time I type that. Like that you, right? You're hindering the name of your business. Keeping it simple, keeping it easy, something that's easily remembered. Uh, like right now I have EV firearms, pretty simple. Uh, my toy company, I, was, I like that name, I was Splatback, right? Uh, my backpack company now is Bag Squire. Um, names that are pretty simple, pretty easy. And as you're trying to come up with a name, or even maybe you're trying to find a way to tweak what you have. One of the things that I've found to finding a name early on in a business is go to GoDaddy. I like GoDaddy. You go to GoDaddy, and it's free. You just type in different names, ideas. It pops up, and it'll, get, it'll actually give you different ideas. Because here's the thing. If you're starting a business, you got to get the web. You have to get the not .co, not .net. You really want to focus on .com unless you are a, a, an organization like a church or a ministry, then you want to get .org. But for the most part, 95%, 98% of us, we want to make sure that we get .com. And if you can't get .com, then look for a different name because it says a lot about the company. Have you ever done that? Somebody's like, hey, go to you know, Al's uh, Barnyard Stuff .tv. And you're like, okay, well, that already told me something about your business. And it didn't tell me the right story. If you have .com, that tells me that, okay, this is more of a legit business. Um, and so I go there. Um, I'm going to say this. because And tonight we will talk about mistakes. So my knife company is called Ravencrest Tactical. What a horrible name. I'm sorry to my partner. It just is a, it's just absolutely horrible, right? I'm 15 businesses in, and I still make the mistake. And I didn't really make the mistake on Ravencrest Tactical. Uh, it was one of those things where I, at the time I had two partners and both of them were in love with Ravencrest Tactical and I could not talk them out of it. It was like a done deal. This is the name. This is awesome, right? We heard that God came, fire came down like it was Ravencrest Tactical. So there was nothing I could do with the fact that it, but it, it's so hard, right? When we first started the business and, and, you know, and I'd be talking to a guy like, about my knives and I go, go to Ravencrest Tactical. And you can see their mind are trying to figure out, right, Raven, how do you spell tactic? Uh, is there a G in there? I don't know. I think there's a number sign. I, like, I don't know how to, like, it's so long to get to ravencresttactical.com. So for those of you that maybe already have a business, maybe you already have a name that you're stuck with, like Ravencrest Tactical. And uh, what I did with that is I came up with the idea and really immediately, as soon as we started going, uh, with knifeknife.com. So I went to GoDaddy. I typed in knife, wasn't available. I went, oh, knife knife. KnifeKnife.com, number one, it helps with the SEO, 
my search engine optimization because I have We Are Knives and it's in the name, not just once, but it is in twice. Uh, not to toot my horn, but that's pretty genius. That was a, not given to me by myself. That was God gave me that. Uh, and it's easy to remember. So now somebody, you know, hey, oh, where would I get these knives? I go, knifeknife.com. Everybody in this room, everybody listening right now, you probably will never forget knifeknife.com. That is the goal. When I have a name and I have a website, I want to make sure that quickly and easily I can say to somebody, knifeknife.com, they'll go home and they won't go, okay, what's so it was a bird with a tactic or something. A crest was in there. We don't want them trying to figure out and remember it. I want it to stick with them. And so your name and the website is very, very important. Once you kind of get a names idea, maybe you have four or five names, ask some people. Ask around. Uh, a great thing, you can put it on, on, on social media. Hey, y'all, vote on my name of, of my business and see what uh, kind of stuff you get. Um, go to, after you get your name, Make sure that you trademark it. At least trademark Google search it. You don't have to get a trademark. I recommend you do. Uh, but I recommend that you get on Google and you Google trademarks. And it'll give you a list and you'll find out if your name is somebody else's. Because there's nothing worse than you do an LLC. You do all this stuff. You put the name. You get the web and everything else. And then you, as with us, so with Ravencrest Tactical, our bread and butter knife, our number one knife seller for four years of the company was our nemesis. Right? It was huge. It was what we built the company on. Then I get a letter from a gentleman who owns NemesisKnives.com, right? and he's going to sue me unless I remove the word nemesis from everything. I don't even know if I can mention it right now. And so like, it was, right, what a pain. You know how hard it is to get rid of nemesis on everything and every part of your website, everything you do, on top of the boxes for the knives and everything else? Simply because we did not search a trademark on that. And so now when we come up with any new name for a knife or I'm doing any uh, name of a company, I make sure that I, I do a quick, it takes, it takes minutes to do a quick uh, trademark search on that, uh, on that. All right, number two, you want to start your LLC. I believe highly in this that, and we'll talk later in chapters about being legit. There's a lot of benefits, of course, and some people have not gone legit and then it came back and bit them really bad and they end up losing the company later. Well, Pastor, what if, I, what if I start an LLC and I don't use that business? But you are, if you're in this, you're going to continue to build businesses. So even if you do an LLC for, for Al's Landscaping, and Al's Landscaping isn't making any money and you want to start something else, you can do a DBA or you can switch, right? You can simply use the same LLC for your next business. I have Scott Anderson Enterprises LLC, and it's always available. It's my startup business LLC. I start a business. I begin to funnel through Scott Anderson Enterprises. If it begins to do well, then I'll create, because I don't want to spend the money unless I have to, then I'll do another LLC for that business, transfer it all over, and away we go. And so I, I like having an extra LLC. It doesn't take a lot to start an LLC. You can do one on your own. Uh, somebody was telling me, I had a number of people say online, they have all, walk it all the way through. It's not that hard. It costs, it costs like 80 bucks, I think, to do all the licenses and everything, to do all that stuff. Or, you know, you can go to somebody. I have somebody that does my LLCs for about, I think it's like 800 bucks, 750 bucks, and you get an LLC uh, made that way. All right. Number three, website. For the love of all that's good and holy, please have a website. Please. I, I've been trying to think of a business in the last few weeks, and even when I was writing the book, of a business that doesn't need a website. And I think, I don't know if there is one. Maybe you'll come up with one. I don't know if there is one. I think in today's day and age, you have to have web presence. Even if you're selling somewhere else, the fact that most of us today will go to the web to see your web presence. It's like 100 years ago when you would walk in a store and the atmosphere of the store dictated whether how you felt about the product, whether you bought or not. Today, the website is your store. I, I wasn't even thinking that even if you had a landscaping company. If I had a landscaping company, I would have a website. I would have a beautiful, amazing website that people could go to. They could see it. It didn't matter. It could be a, I, doesn't, I, I, any business you can name needs web presence, and I'll get into more of the reasons why, but you got to have a web presence. And not just web presence, when we do something in uh, business air, we do things pro, right? We don't do things just halfway. Oh, just a half step backwards also. So me and my, my kids are starting a pickleball company right now, is what we're doing in the midst of all of this. Uh, we're doing the same thing you all are doing. And uh, the conversation came, because we're going to sell them mainly Amazon. So we're really focused on Amazon, so do you need a website? Well, yeah, we need a website. 
well, we're going to sell them on Amazon. Yeah, but I still want to have a website, and it still can send them to Amazon, but I have to have a web presence because there will come a point as the business grows that people want to go, hey, what's the number one uh, pickleball racket out there? Right? And I want, when you search that on Google, for my SEO to come up and people to be gone, not to Amazon, but also go to my website. And you begin to put, I can put a whole lot of more content and stuff on my website that I can never put on Amazon. And so to have a good, and not just a website, it has to be a pro website. Once again, this is your store. It tells the entire story about your product or your service. If you're cleaning houses, have a, a because they're going to determine whether or not they're going to use you most of the time. We all do this. We go to a website. Have you ever been to a website and you're like, oh my gosh, it's dingy, it's dark. I'm not going to use that. That's hor- It doesn't matter what it's for. You're like, that's horrible. Right? And then you go to a clean, nice, easy to navigate website. You're like, oh, this is a pro company. It might be, you know, George out of his garage, right? Making, ma- making soda pop. You know, it, it doesn't matter because it looked like a clean, great website. You judge the entire company on a few moments on the website. Well, Pastor, how do I, I don't know how to create a website. Well, there's two ways that you can do a website. Number one, you could learn. My boys did. It took, it took them a better part of an afternoon. There are videos and stuff that you can watch, right? YouTube. There's epic programs, I guess, according to them. Then you get on, and you can learn how to do an amazing website on your own, right? It's, it's not, well, I don't know if I'm that good. To be a great business owner, you have to have the mindset that you can do anything, right? I, can, I know this. I can do a website. I can learn it this week. I can, I can learn it probably in the better part of tonight and do that if I didn't have my kids doing it or my other partners. I could do that. And you have to have as a business owner a I can do anything mentality. It doesn't mean that I will do anything, but it does mean that I can be victorious. If I put enough time to anything or any project on this earth, I know I can do it. It may take me a lot longer than some, but I can guarantee you this. I will study it. I will research it. I'll YouTube it. I'll do all that I can, but I know that I can do it. Make sure that in your vocabulary, the word can't is never a part of that. Well, I can't do that. Doesn't matter. Because I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. There is not a single thing on this earth that I can't do. I could probably dunk if I put my mind to it enough years and time. (laughs) Right? I'd have to really work out a lot. Well, whatever you put your mind to, I can do it. I can. So even if somebody say, hey, you know, you could do your website. You're like, I don't know if I'm that good. That never comes out of my mouth. Because I don't allow it to get into my head. I could say, you know what, I'm not very technical, but you know what, if I spend enough time, I know that I could figure it out. The other thing you could do is, uh, uh, is just go to Freelancer. If you want to spend about $250, there is a guy probably in India or a girl in India who would love to get $250 for you. It's an incredible amount of money in the places they are. And they do it very fast and very efficiently. And so you can get a really pro website. Well, how do my website look? What should I do? What should, here's what I do. I go around to the product I am, and I look at the competitors and other people's websites, and I find out what I like. And I copy it in a sense and put my own flavor on But I do copy it. Right? You know what's funny? The website that you're looking at was somebody copied somebody else's website who copied somebody else's website. We get in this mentality that somehow I have to reinvent the wheel every time I do something. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. The wheel's already been invented. Everything on this planted, right? Every invention was built upon somebody copying somebody else and making it a little bit better and making it a little bit better and making it a little bit better. So we don't have to reinvent it. Just simply take what is out there and put your own flavor on that. And so I'll go and I'll be like, oh, I like the look of this. I like how this navigates. I'll take this. And I also do the same thing with copy. So copy is what you describe your product or your service about. If I did a landscaping company, I would find the number one landscaping companies in, in America. I would look at their copy and what they say. I don't have to sit at a computer and go, I like grass. I want it. Right? I don't have to try and figure out how to, right, how to navigate Right? if you're not super great at English. But instead, I can simply copy, paste it into my Word document, go in there, add my own flavor. My kids were kind of, in a sense, they were like, wow. When we're doing our pickleball, I had, I had to go get the copy for pickleball rackets. I just went to some of the best. They have some of the great wording. I took it, put my own flavor on it, mixed two or three of them together. And they read, they're like, oh my God, that's genius. I'm not a genius. Somebody else was a genius. I'm a genius in what I know what to do. Right? And so just don't, once again, your time is valuable. And you, for me, let let me say this, I'm a great writer when somebody edits, but 
I would rather spend my time taking something that somebody else spent, right, and put it all, and they copied it from somebody else and copied it from somebody else, and here we go. And what I found out also when I went to all these companies, it looked like they all got the same thing anyway. They all, everybody said about the same thing on all the pickleball rackets. So uh, go and get your copy, find copy, put your own flavor on it, go to freelancers. Number four is social media. Once again, I can't figure out a company reason why you wouldn't want social media. There is not a better way that I can think of to engage with your customers, no matter what your customers are, than social media. You have to spend some time on social media presence. And we'll, we'll talk next week more about your time. But you can do it simple and easy, right? You get Hootsuite. You, you take an hour on a Saturday. You can put all of your stuff to go in for all your social media at the same time. Take about an hour to do that, whatever that might be. And it posts everything for you in that week, a long time when you're starting up your business. But your social media has to be engaging. My Social media for my companies are not... People don't like, anybody like, I don't like advertisements when I go to somebody, I'm following somebody on Instagram. I hate that when it's all ads, I'll just stop following you. But when you're engaging with me and giving me, right, some cool stuff, for me, it's, it's cool pictures of guns and knives when we go out, right? And you're like, well, how do I even do that? With today's iPhone and Droid cameras, my gosh, I can take a knife, put it on a, a tree, stand it like that, put it, get a great picture on there, put it in portrait mode, and it looks like something that is some professional photographer took, and you can throw that on Instagram and, you know, and have a, just an instant little uh, tagline, and I'm engaging in my customers. You have to have engagement in your social media. Social media has a big parts of it. Number one is that your customers are engaging. They, they get around it. They see it. They get excited for it. And then when you do do some advertisement, it's right in front of them. And number no, no, the second thing that it does is it helps you with the SEO. Google and, and Yahoo and all these other search engines, they search every area of the net right, in order to find out who's going to be able to come up first. And when I got social media, I got some, some content in there, right? I got some videos on there. I got some different things. I put it on, on YouTube. I put all that stuff out there. It's helping to drive up my SEO, my optimizing my search engine. Uh, having videos are huge. So when we come up with a pickleball, me and the boys have already talked about that when our rackets come in, like we're already going to go out and do training videos. Now, in no way, shape, or form, I am a pro in any way, but I can look like a pro. Let me say that I can dress like a pro. My kids can sound like a pro. And then we're just going to go ahead and do, we'll give you good tips, but we're going to do video tips with our rackets, right? Things to do, things not to do, things to try and put out there. So we're going to put together videos. It'll take, you know, maybe a better part of a half of an afternoon to be able to do that. But once again, when you have video content out there, when you have blogs maybe out there, when you have newsletters and different things that are out there, it's helping to drive up my SEO, my search engine, but it's also engaging in with my customers. Remember this, I'm going to, uh, both places, realize when you're doing your web and your um, social media that you want... What's the atmosphere that you want? Think of it like a store. You, every web has to have a different atmosphere. My toy company definitely had a different atmosphere than my tactical knife company, right? It has to, mine has to be more tactical, right? It has to have more of a, a military kind of police kind of feel to it. My toy company had to have a fun feel. So when you're getting your website done, if you're doing furniture, right, there's a different feel and look if you're selling furniture, if you're doing real estate. There's a, there's a feel that comes across. And so what do I want my store atmosphere to be? What do I want my social media? What, what, here's the best word for it, emotion. As we talk about marketing next week, what emotion? Emotion drives all of us. Right, we buy on emotion. We 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 purchase. Right, we go somewhere. We do things on emotion. Emotion is much stronger than words. What's the emotion that I want my website when you go there? What is the emotion that I want you to feel when you're at my website? What's the emotion I want you to feel when you're you're uh, watching my video, my content? If you're looking at my um, my Instagram page. All right, number five. I put this in here. I don't. It just was in the book at this place. Uh, but it's good when you're starting your company out to have a strategy to capture emails. Once again, I can't think of a company that you wouldn't want to capture emails. Um, it's gold to me. Our email list, and it's funny because you start off, you're like, well, I have no emails. What am I going to do with that? Right? And then you got 10 emails. You're like, whoop de doo But Ravencrest Tactical, right, last uh, week, we crossed 15,000 confirmed, like, engaging emails. That's what people are getting off and on. That is gold. That email list 
uh, me and my partner were talking and looking at it, it makes me about $10,000 a month in normal months, and during the holiday season, it probably makes me about $150,000 in December. That list is near priceless. It's epic to be able to have that list. And so finding a way to make sure that you're capturing people's emails, and then you guard it. Don't sell it, right? What happens? Or overuse it, right? Give them an email a day. Anybody like emails a day? I delete those. I put those in my trash, right? So I have to make sure that when you get an email to me, it's like, a, you're like, oh, cool, Ravencrest, tactical email. There you go. It's got to be something that you're like, oh, this is going to be cool. It's something that I can use. I don't overuse it. I don't abuse it because I, wanna, I want these email people, it is gold to us, and so being able to find a, a, a nice flavor that doesn't annoy, and you can use your own judgment. You go, yeah, I don't like to get an email every day. I don't like to get nothing but advertisement. I don't, these are the things I don't like to get. So I want to make sure that I give my customers or my people the same thing that I enjoy. And so a, keep that email list, guard that email list, uh, capture that email list. Number six is your SEO. Uh, in today's age, it's, it's priceless. Making sure that when you're going to get your, your, and that's, if you don't know what that is, it's search engine optimization. Um, when you go to Google and you type in OTF knife, I have to be on the first page. I have to be, right? Because of how many, most of us, if any of us, don't ever go to the second page. I don't go to the second page on anything. It doesn't matter if I'm looking for a carpet cleaner or anything. If you're on the second page, you might as well not be on the internet at all. And so how do I get my, my product or my service on that first page? Right? And so what has worked uh, uh, for us, number one, you got to make sure that you want to do it organically. Organic is the biggest. That's the goal. You're not going to get organic right away, but I want to, organic just means that it naturally happens. I don't use super cool tricks or trades, and what will happen when you start your business, there'll be companies come to you and go, hey, we'll get you uh, uh, number one organically in the first month. And anything easy is worthless, because here's what happens. Uh, I talked to a, a person that was out of Georgia and he had done that, and then he got blackballed on, on Google, and his business will never come up in Google ever again. That's one of the worst things that can ever happen to a business, like when, because Google don't play. And I always say, say it to, to myself and to people, there are people much smarter than me <laughs> that plugged all the loopholes that I ever think that I can get by to be able to raise up, right, uh, and get my SEO up. They plugged all the loopholes. They're, they spend millions and millions of dollars to plug these loopholes because they want to make sure that organically the right when you search for something the right thing comes up and not people that are cheating the system and so somebody tells you i'll get you in the month they're lying to you it's time work effort and what i'm talking to you about today to be able to become organic and so in order to be organic content is huge Making sure on social media, making sure on your web page, you have a place where you have your videos, you have your content that is out there. Maybe you're writing newsletters, maybe you're writing, uh, uh, you're doing blogs or different things. All, and you make sure that you don't overdo it, right? right? If I went knife, 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 knife a thousand times uh, on a page, right? I might come up for a month, but then Google's going to go, oh, you're cheating the system. You no longer ever get to be on Google again, right? But I can throw in keywords into my blogs, do strategic, do it reasonably, do it smart, intelligently, like you're really writing something uh, out there. And you have it in your videos. When I do a video, hey, uh, OTF, torture test, right? I have, because I want to, I'll figure out what you want to come up in the Google search and find ways to put that naturally and right in your web presence, uh, uh, in your, in your, on your YouTube videos or whatever you're doing in the titles, so that as the little boogers, whatever they are, go out and they, they're pulling from everywhere. And as they're pulling and pulling, and then you get enough of it, and then also making sure that don't trick people into your website, um, right? And people have done that, where they have these cool little tricky gimmicks, and people come to your, and you're like, oh yeah, get them to my page. Google looks at how long people are on your page, and that's a big thing, right? Making sure that people, when they come to your page, they don't go, oh, and then just click and get off. That they come, and they, they go around, they go here, they go there. Google tracks all of those different aspects, which has a big part of how you come up in the search engine. And so making sure that uh, the page has weight. Uh, there's a land we always do a landing page. I think that's important to have a good landing page, uh, but your person that does your uh, web will do that. Uh, we have our name in the web, like knifeknife.com. If you can do that, great. If you can't, um, I believe in AdWords. AdWords is what put us to be organic. It costs money, but it's the Google system. And so when we first started out, 50 bucks a week was a lot. $50 a week, I was like, whoa. Well, you know, but 
uh, my partner's like, no, we have to do it. I mean, we have to get it on there. This is uh, the way the system works. And so we did $50 a week of AdWords. And then, man, that was working out great. And then we went up to $100. And then we went to $150. And right now we do about $1,500 a month in Google AdWords. It's just, uh, it's, it's just such an important part of business. And you think about it from Google's perspective, if you're paying them money, they're going to want to make sure some way, somehow, that you end up coming up organically up in the list. And so, of course, there's always more books and more information and people that are way smarter than me at this that are out there. Study it if you're not getting your results. But these are the things that have worked for us to be able to come up, uh, number one. Number seven, if I wasn't talking, giving you numbers, number seven is Amazon. If you're not on Amazon, I don't know what to do with you. If you're doing a product, at least. Make sure you get on Amazon. It's the number one selling platform. Uh, there's people that build entire business. I would be for anyone in here building a business on Amazon. Our, rack of, our pickleball rackets, we're going to start Amazon. That's, that's where we're going to be with, with the rackets. And if you don't know how to do Amazon, I, I know somebody that uh, were, would, you could hire that could get you all up in Amazon and get you working for that. All right. So... I gave you the foundation stuff tonight, but then I also want to get on the inside uh, and work on what will stop you, right? Here's what happens many times with business when I meet with people. They get excited. They get a name. They get the web. They even go to GoDaddy. They get the web. They're working. They may even get the website done, right? And they get to the point. It's like getting ready to go jump on a diving board. You got the swimsuit. You got the Speedos on, right? You got the goggle. You got all the hair. You're, all, you're up on the, And they get to the edge of the high dive, and they won't jump. And this is business. So millions and millions of businesses, great God-given ideas, never jumped and never were started. And I don't want that to be in this group. I want us to be a group of people, risk takers. That doesn't matter. How, I'm just going to jump. I'm just going to see, hit the water and let's see what happens and I'll, I'll do it again. And here's what happens. Your butt is bigger than God's butt is what happens in life. And let me explain that. Because you'll say, well, but I don't know if this is the right time. Uh, but I don't know if this is the right economy, but inflation, but I don't have anybody to sell the product, but I don't know how to work this, but I'm not, right? And we have all of these different buts in our life, right? The same thing that happened to Israel. Israel got to the promised land. Promise was there. They had to, two people had to carry the grapes alone. They said, man, this promised land is everything God said about it, right? Business is everything. Business is the key in today. It's been the key for thousands of years of having success and being able to have financial freedom. But they said, the giants are just so big. See, Israel, right, they put their butt ahead of, except for Joshua and Caleb, who said, but our God is bigger. See, they had a different mentality. See, they, they, but my God, but I can do all things through Christ Jesus. But God is for me. It doesn't matter what's against me. I, begin, I have to get my booty out of the way, my butt out of the way, and begin to operate more in God's. And so I have to cast down all the thoughts and be willing to say, my God is able. I'm not going to stop at the edge of success and not jump in. I wonder how many millions of people never ended up in success because they didn't step out. They had a God-given idea. They had God-given prayer. They had everything in place, but they just didn't step out. And I don't want that for anybody that is watching or going through this program anywhere. To be people who get to heaven and God's like, man, if you would have done that, that widget would have sold. It was going to be a great idea, right? And you just didn't do it. Yeah, but pastor, I don't have this and I don't have that. Right? And our mind makes up all of these excuses. And I put this in this book, and I also have it in my Millionaire Habits in 21 Days book, and it's something that I, I live my life by, and I believe with my whole heart. There was a study that was done at, at a college, and, and this, the, this uh, team wanted to find out, why is it that certain people graduate from our business school and become highly successful, while a majority of people right? They get out and they just get it, and they're average. They just get out into the mix and they work a job. And this, what, What's the difference, right? We want to find out why. What is the, the, the factor that differs, right? Does it have something to do with their gender? Does it have something to do with their, their, their background or their parents? Or did their parents stay married? Did their parents divorce, right? Did it have anything to do with, 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 with their culture? Did it have anything to do with their race? What, 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 what was the defining factors of the difference between highly successful 
and those people that just became average. And none of those things were anything. The only thing that made a difference, the only thing that they could find that was a difference between highly successful and the average person was the highly successful people stepped out and took big risks. That's the only difference. They were the ones that left the company and started their own business. They're the ones that stepped out and started the company. They're the ones that took the risk. And they came up with what's called the corridor principle. Corridor principle says this, that we're all in a corridor of life and there's doors of opportunity up ahead. Doors that you cannot see as long as you're standing right here. But as you step out and take a risk in the unknown, you begin to step towards these doors of opportunity that you never would have saw had you not taken the risk. But as I get up here, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this happen. And this and this is really what I call the favor of God. God's favor as I step out begins to open. It's the favor of Abraham. God said to Abraham, leave everything you know and I need you to go to a place. I need you to step out. First time God told Abraham that, he he went nowhere. He stayed in the same place. And nothing in his life changed. But the second time, he left everything, stepped into the unknown. Now, I wonder if Abraham, the first time he was told, said, you know what, God, I'm just going to wait, Sarah. You you and I will just wait until I have the finances, to have the means, until we're super wealthy, until I have large herds. Then we'll go to the place. But God's like, it doesn't work that way. You step into the unknown, he stepped out, and then opportunity came, and then he became very wealthy and very prosperous. Same thing in business. Both of my big companies, my toy company and also my knife company, same, they both have the very same start, just on different levels. Toy company, I found the toys, they're in China, uh, and uh, uh, I contacted, I got a hold of the manufacturer finally, and they said, well, you got to order 50,000 of them. 50,000? What in the world am I going to do with 50,000 toys? What am I doing? I haven't sold 10 of anything in my lifetime. How am I going to sell 50,000 of something? Anyway, I have no salespeople. I have no store. I have no, I have no web. I have no, I have no, tra- what, 50,000? But this came right after I discovered the corridor principle. So I simply said, you know what? Order them. Let's do it. Let's do it. And so we had to get the money at the time all together. It was $5,000, get all the money together, step out. I got 50,000 toys. And I was like, you know what? My great, great, great grandchildren will probably have toys for Christmas if I can't sell these things. These are going to be forever. But while the ship was coming over with my products, it was interesting because of my conversation, the toys coming, that by the time they got here, I had three salespeople that wanted to go out and sell my product for me, which they ended up doing. They had all these ideas that came about selling them at trade shows, all came out. And I believe we sold out, if I remember, like in a few months, I think we sold all 50,000. I had to order 100,000 more toys, right? Had I never stepped out, I never would have sold a single toy. I had to step out in the unknown, and in the unknown, the doors of opportunity opened up in both my businesses. Amen? Same thing for you. I have no answer. Like, you're like, well, how am I going to do How am I going to We have all these, how am I, how am I? God will do it. Step out. Right? Take the risk. Take a smart risk. We'll talk about that. I mean, don't go out and you know, throw $500,000 in a restaurant, please, folks, if you've never done a business, because you don't know how to do a business. I actually literally go through that example. Start a small business. Right? I don't throw my granddaughter on a Harley Davidson and say, go, before she's learned to ride a bike. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've got to learn how to ride a bike right, before you can ride the big boy stuff. Right? There's different levels in life. And so we want to be intelligent. That's why if you don't have a business, start something small. Something that you can build. Something that you can grow in your wisdom and your understanding in. And uh, we'll close with this last little bit and then um, I want to do a couple questions if we've got time. Um, Our biggest problem that we have is the fear of failure. You're afraid of what takes you to success. That's what's funny. We're literally afraid of what every highly successful person will tell you this. I will say this. The reason why I'm successful is 100% because of my failures. My failures are why I have success. Obviously, everything is God breathing through me, but my failures is where I learn the most. I learn more from every failure than I've ever learned from any amount of success. My failures were stepping stones, and you have to receive failures in a different light. Tom Watson, who was over IBM, was asked, how do I become successful faster? He said, double the rate of your failure. And the average mind goes, that doesn't even make any sense. But once you get into success, you go, that's 100% correct. You've got to double how many things you're trying. You've got to fail a lot. That I have failed so many. I have a big portion of the chapter, one of the chapters you'll read this week. I have 22 businesses in there, right? Craziness, right? 
things, and it's so funny, I made the same mistake because I had to type out what I learned in each of the businesses, and I was writing it out, and I go, right, how many times am I going to make that mistake? Are you kidding me? Like that, I did the same thing that I did in this business. When am I going to learn, right? Uh, right, all the way, way up to just like five years ago. I'm pretty successful in business five years ago. And uh, we start a bath bomb company with my kids, right? Cool idea. Order, right, 10,000 bath bombs and don't do any research. Put them in my garage in the Arizona heat. They all turned an ugly, nasty green. <laughs> Stop it, Scott. You're smarter than that. You're so much smarter than that. Learn. And I teach you in there, throw a BB at it. There's no reason to order that many. I, and what I learned, because with the pickleball, they want me to order lots of rackets. No, no, no. I want to order 100 rackets. Because I don't, like if we can't sell them, good. I got 100 rackets. I got rackets for the rest of my life. I don't need to order 10,000 rackets because that would not be, right? That's not a good way to do a business. I talk about those things. I had, I'm going to share this with you. And I, this, it's in the book, and it, it, made me, it made me laugh. When I read that again today, I laugh at myself so hard. So I had a, a, a business idea. And it's funny, it's after Ravencrest Tactical, right? It was afterwards. So I, I know business pretty well. And we were going to do a business on helping people get their Yelp reviews up. It was a really good idea. Uh, me and my partner, we spent like a ton of time like getting it, getting the computer, everything. You sit down in a restaurant, there was an uh, app that they could get, and it literally it it helped raise their Yelp. But the name, remember I talked about the name? Please, Lord, forgive me for this. Our name was Go Nods. And so, <laughs> sorry, I can't even say it with a straight face. Go nods. It sounds dirty now when I say it, right? It was go because I wanted to get a nod, right? A go nod. And it, it just, I'm like, that's the worst name any company maybe ever has come up with in the history of man. So you're going to make mistakes. Even I may, right? We're going to make mistakes. But we learn and we grow from our mis- go nods. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe they'll cut that off the video. Anyway, because it sounds so bad. It's such a bad name. Anyway, you'll get to look through 21 of my, I think it's 21 or 22 of my businesses as you go through there. And I, and I like that. I'm going to have you do the same thing. It's great to journal your mistakes because that's how you learn. I learn and I learn and I learn. Every mistake was a growth for me. I want to see if there's any questions that are out there. It'd be great if it was questions kind of pertaining to the last two weeks because you never know if I'm going to cover it. But if you do happen to ask one, I may just say, hey, we're going to cover that uh, next week if there's any way. I think we got about 10 minutes of questions if we want. Or we can go home early too. I don't mind either way. And so they got a mic. If you got a question, throw your hand up. And uh, they'll, they'll bring you a mic over. And, uh, uh, right here. You won't... Right yeah. here, Pastor Scott. Yes, who? I've seen... I can't see anything, so just talk. Okay. Uh, where do you outsource your websites and SEO to if you do outsource the website design and the SEO? Uh, freelancer is what I would do. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, so I'm I just lucky. All my partners uh, lately can do web design. Mm-hmm. So they're the ones that, that do all my web design. I've never outsourced to, I guess I did. Uh, at one point, we tried a company to help our SEO. Uh, but it, didn't, it just seemed like it was wasted money to me. I'm not saying if you have a company that it does do that. The, at least the company we used, it felt like I was just throwing money away uh, with them. So I'm not against them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am always against uh, spending too much money with people. That, people give too big of promises oftentimes in, in some of those areas. And, uh, you know, hey, we're going to get blah, 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 right? It sounds too good to be true. It probably is for a big number. And so once again, and I talk about this later about throwing a BB at it, where you go, hey, I'll give you $100. You know, you say you'll give me, you know, a gajillion of this, give me less, and I want to throw a little bit of BB at it, and let's see what success we have. See, in a sense, I like to test the water before I jump in, if I can, in a lot of areas, especially when it comes into the fields of marketing, which is SEOs is a big part of marketing. Uh, marketing places will come in, and they're going to make your business the biggest business ever. Remember, they're a marketing company, so no one's going to be better at selling their company to you than they are, right? And so you have to just you just throw a BB at it. Don't throw everything at it. Just try it out and say, hey, rather than doing all these things, let's do this and see how my business grows and try things in a small thing. And if it does work, like I said, for us, we tried Google AdWords, right? We did 50 bucks a week. And then, you know, we did that for a month and we saw a big result in it. So then we we bumped it up and bumped it up and bumped it up. And it's a big part of our thing. So hopefully that answers your question. All right. Next question. And just start talking because the lights are in my eyes. I can't see. Unless there's no questions, then we'll just go home. I I have one right here. Yes. How would you suggest us going about finding a coach? I know that's important, finding somebody 
that's on the same level business wise. So, so you mean like hire a, a, a life coach or a business coach or something? There are some really good coaches out there, and I, it's not that I don't believe in them. Um, and be careful of how much they charge. Um, I think that's an important thing. I think if, if you know if they're making hundred bucks an hour, hundred fifty bucks an hour, I think that's good. Um, I believe. Now, I'm not saying that if you get a coach, it depends on how you learn. I believe that I can get the same information by simply getting books and uh, uh, listen to podcasts and stuff that I can get from a coach. Now, it doesn't mean that I maybe if I have some big questions that I that that maybe I'll hire them just to answer some questions to help me with that. Here's what you find. Can I? I'm going to say this. So there are in everything in life there are great right and they're bad. Right? There's great seminars to go to and financial conferences, but they're bad ones. And there's ones that just simply ran by people that have never done a business before. And I know, Lord help me say this right, um, I know life coaches whose lives are a mess, an absolute disaster. Right? They're, they're, they're financial coaches and they're, they're like a step away from living out of their car and they're teaching people on finances. So when you are Maybe do the due diligence of making sure that who is speaking into your life has the success that you want. Does that make sense? Like if they don't have the like if I was teaching you all how to dunk a basketball, you're like, well, that that doesn't make sense, right? He shouldn't be teaching me on that. So what I love about what this book is about what I'm doing is I can say, I built businesses. Like I know what I'm talking about. I can give you information on building a business. There's a lot of things, like I can't help you build your website. I don't know how to do that, right? And if I was coaching you on building websites, you'd be like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I could sell you on it. I'm a very good salesperson. But in the bottom line is make sure that those that are speaking into your life have the fruit that you want. If they don't have, Jesus said, if they don't have the fruit, don't buy the tree. All right, another question. If there is one. Yes. So I have, so I have a uh, Medicare insurance business. I've got a health business. If I'm going to expand those businesses, would you expand them under different names, or would you bundle them into one name? I have an LLC. That's a, that's a very interesting question. I think that there's not a specific answer. Once again, on, on things like that, I would pray about it. Uh, but like, so for for let me just give you what we do. So um, we found that when I did Ray, with Ravencrest Tactical, our knife company, I started a knife of the month company. If I could go back in time. I would have separated, did what I said, and I would have separated the company. Because the Knife of the Month company almost bankrupt us, uh, our OTF company. So my bread and butter almost went down on the ship of this Knife of the Month company. And the reason what happened was I went to selling a, a knife for $9, if you, don't, if you were part of that, it was $9 a month, $9.99 a month, and we would send you a knife every month. Cool idea, great idea. Everybody was doing knife of the month, so don't jump on the bandwagons because they're not always successful. And we were sending out 4,000 knives a month. You're like, oh my God, that's awesome. No, it was not. It was horrible. And so, oh my God, what a horrible business. And uh, at least the way we did it. And uh, so what happened though is this people who buy $9 a month knives are different than people that buy $200 knives. And so when you get bad reviews, it, it blew me away how many people would go, Oh my God, it's this cheap knife. I'm like, you got it for $9. What is your complaint? <laughs> but their reviews, right? People associated now our $200 not, my knife with $9 knives. So it, yeah, yeah, you go. Once again, <laughs> how many mistakes am I going to make in business? Those are, oh, mistakes. So the, this one hurt our brand, and it took us almost a full year. Like, we just cut that thing. You know, I said, hey, we got to cut this off. And it took us almost a full year to get back to our brand again. And so it's, it's business sensitive. It's something that you're going to have to pray about. Ask some people maybe more in your field or area, um, you know, what should I do? And so is the question over here is I think you see, search out wisdom. Right? If you have a landscaping company, don't feel bad about calling some other people that know more about a landscaping company than you do. And pick their brains. Take them out for coffee. Right? Take them out and, and, and let them... And is fine. Well, who is want to talk to me? It is interesting that people love to share their wisdom from their experience. It's just weird. We all do. Right? If you're great at something, somebody asks you, you're like, yeah, let me share it with you. It's just, I don't know, it's something that God put inside of us that we love to share in, once again, like for this one, my favorite things I'm going to do this week is to get up here and share even my uh, moments to be able to share with you all. I really enjoy that. All right. Do we have, we have time maybe for one more question? Right here. Yes. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to getting the book. Um, I currently, we have a barbecue catering company. Ooh. And I just wanted to know, um, are you going to be providing like resources for reputable companies that do like marketing and, um, you know, finance or accounting, you know, things like I that? Can, now there's th so I can give you from my wheelhouse, I can give you my accountant, who's yeah. amazing. I love my accountant. And uh, they are my fifth accountant. And I've had very bad accountants. Uh, and uh, this is, a, I have a great accountant. Um, marketing, I'm going to teach you all what I believe in marketing. Um, and so let's wait until, I'll mar until that night that I talk about marketing. Okay. And that'll, I believe that's next week I'll be talking about uh, marketing. And uh, so I'll be able to give you that. Um, resources, also reputable is always tricky. And make sure that here in the church, just because somebody's a Christian doesn't mean they're reputable. Can I get an amen anywhere out amen. there? So... You got to listen to the spirit. You got to right. But even then, I mean, I have been highly ripped off, right? Mm -hmm. But I let me say this: people are always more important than money. So I love people, but money is money, right? And so people are going to rip me off, and that's part of it. And you know what? God always takes care of me. So whatever is stolen is, comes back to me seven times. Yeah. So I've used Christian companies, and I like to use Christian companies. But Christian companies also have. You know, done me wrong in a sense. Mm -hmm. Well, that's on them. It doesn't matter because what you steal from me doesn't matter because God always repays me Amen. in my mind. So um, I believe in networking even amongst you all. You know, I think it's good if you exchange and get talking because we learn. I said that, that the more people that you get information from, the more people you're pulling from their past experiences, from things that happened to them, things they used. And so if somebody in here, you're like, hey, I know a good marketing company. There you go. That's a great time to have a question. And then I believe that once again, as you step out, God's going to bring you, right, some people that you need to be able to help you with that avenue. But please, if you know, I wouldn't miss the marketing week. I, I believe that um, what I teach is not anything you'll find out in any college or anything on really what works to market your company. It is the foundation that built Ravencrest Tactical that I believe that God gave me day one of the company. And my partners were like, we can't do that. And I'm like, now follow me on this. And it really is what built our company. I'm not, not saying put it away from our product or how much work that the other partners did in it. But I want to say that as far as marketing is concerned, what I'm going to teach you on that, I think it is, is priceless information. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we got a... Well, I'll do one more. We have one last question. All right, I'll do one more. Right here. One more, one Scott. more. Uno mas. Yes, so oh, you... Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah. have to understand with the lights. Yes. So you mentioned that, like, putting a product through Amazon is a must, so just trying to if get some can. information as to how you can go about that, since if you Google search, it's going to give you so many ways to do it. Right. Just trying to find out where is a good way to even start doing that. So... I think Google is always, to me, that's my go-to way of how to kind of look at, you know, who comes up top is good. Like I said, I do have uh, a person that this is their business they're doing, and they're really good at putting it on Amazon. So if you, you want, I can get you that information. They're, they're, they're pros. Um, and you're like, well, how come Ravencrest Tactical's not on? Well, they're working on it right now, but um, they won't. It's, it's yeah, me and Amazon, I love them. I mean, knives in general are very difficult. Uh, Google now just, I talk about AdWords, I'll put that out to you. Literally yesterday, my, my partner uh, texted me and said, hey, they, they won't let us do OTF knives as an AdWord anymore because of their policies against knives. Uh, you can sell knives, but you just can't use AdWords for some silly reason uh, out there, right? You can do some very bad sites out there and get probably AdWords, but you can't do mine. But anyway, right? So um, Amazon was the same thing. Amazon... Uh, pulled us down, won't let us be on there because we sell OTF knives. Even though, as I argued all the way up almost to Bezos, I think I got like one person underneath Bezos, argued that there's OTF knives. Anyway, it's a law. So, um, but if you get on Amazon, it is a treasure and there's ways to do it. You can do it yourself. Or like I said, uh, you could hire somebody. There's people that you can also hire. You can Google that also. Or you can use uh, who I have to be able to get you on Amazon. Um, let me tell you what Amazon did. When my knives, were, my knives were on it, I think we were on it for three weeks before they pulled down. Within one week, we were selling $3,000 of knives a week. Now, that's good extra. It's just extra. Let me say that. That's just extra money. Because right? what happened is it didn't change how much my web was already doing. It was just people. It was just three extra thousand dollars, $3,500 one week. I think the last week we did it was like $3,800. Just extra money. 
And they wouldn't let me on there. And just so you know, I'm not the person that gives up. I fought. I'd be, I'd be at Bezos' house if I could. Like, I, was, I, would, I fought so hard. Uh, but now I've got this person working on it. And they're saying maybe they can get me on Amazon. I think Amazon, like I said, I think it's a treasure. Uh, so if you can get on Amazon, it's not for every product. I know that my son had uh, uh, a company, and there's like certain things you have to have highly tested. Uh, that was our problem with our bath bombs. We couldn't get those on there because they you had to go through some physical fitness. I don't know. There's so many tests I had to do to be able to get that on there that you would never be able to get your bath bomb, especially if they turned an ugly green in your garage. They're never going to make it. I so enjoy this with you all, and um, I look forward to seeing you next week. I know you enjoyed today's session on Think Like a Business Air, and don't forget to pick up the book and sow the book into some people's lives out there. I really encourage you, if you know a single mom out there, my heart is to touch the single moms out there. They have, they're have, they doing a lot. And if there's a way that you can sow into a single moms, I'm going around all over the country and I'm sowing into single moms out there also. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Don't forget to go on Amazon, get the book, and next week is gonna be amazing and awesome.